get free from people. The day that you allow the opinions of the outside world to dictate the way you feel about yourself, it is the beginning of the end of you living a blessed and self-loving, secure life. Love yourself. Love yourself. Believe in yourself. Independent of the validation of the world. Have opinions and feelings about yourself. Independent of the feedback. Why you got to have somebody calling you beautiful every day in order for you to feel beautiful? Do you believe that you're beautiful? Or do you only believe you're beautiful when other people say that you're beautiful? I'm just asking. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, self-love is the cure to self-hate. These are the type of qualities that I'm going and have been instilling in my daughter. There is no man that you could ever meet, Shayla, that can make you feel more amazing than what you're supposed to feel about yourself. Nobody wants to be alone, but if you show up empty, as an empty shell, and you're expecting this man to fulfill you and fill you up with all of the love that doesn't exist, because as soon as he leaves, you're depleted, you're empty, and you have nothing left for yourself again. Never rely or depend on anybody to fulfill your heart. I love me even if you stop loving me. I'm amazing when you don't think I'm amazing. You can say the nastiest, meanest, evilest shit that you could ever conjure up. It will never change the way I feel about myself. I'm telling you, that's the way I live my life. That's how I feel about me. Very powerful when you can say, I like who I am. I feel good about myself. I'm proud of who God made me to be. Most people can't do this. They say, I would feel good about myself if I didn't have these weaknesses. I would be happy with who I am if I was a better parent, if I wasn't so jealous, if I was more patient. I would hold my head up high if I hadn't made these mistakes. There will always be some reason why you shouldn't feel good about who you are. The accuser will make sure to remind you of something that you're not doing right, some way that you failed. If you're going to live in victory, you have to put your foot down and say, that's it. I'm done being against myself. The day that you start living your life according to everybody else's opinion is the beginning of the end. Most of y'all don't actually know your self-worth. You don't know your self-value. So you're like a vulnerable little child. You're shaking and it's like, everybody loves me this week. So I love me this week. Next week, it drops. So now you're running around insecure and not loving yourself, sad and depressed, based on the feedback, the responses, and the energy that the rest of the world is giving you. If you allow your self-worth to be based on what other people think of you is the beginning of the end. I love me. So the day that you decide to stop loving me, I'm not going to love myself any less. I believe in me. If you stop believing in me, I'm not going to believe in myself any less. If you believe that I'm irrelevant and that I don't mean anything to the world, that no one is checking for me, because you think or believe that about me, it doesn't mean that I'm going to believe it about myself. You spend your life performing for a crowd? It'll kill you. And you're like, I'm good. I'm not a singer. I don't perform for people. It's gotten much deeper than that now. It's the feeling that we get when we start offering ourselves up in a form that is more impressive to people, but is not authentic to us. It's the mode that we all get tempted to get into. When we start trying to bring a version of ourselves to a situation that we think will make a good impression. Sometimes you can really be functioning in a role, but deep down feel like you are not really capable and you are not really worthy of the role. And so when people give you a compliment, you can't even receive it because it feels like they're talking about somebody else because you know so much about yourself 
that you explain away your strengths and wallow in your weaknesses. It's called imposter syndrome or fraudulence complex. That piece that we're after lies somewhere beyond personality, beyond the perception of others, beyond invention and disguise, even beyond effort itself. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all of your glory. Our eyes are not viewers. They are also projectors that are running a second story over the picture that we see in front of us all the time. Fear is writing that script, and the working title is, I'll Never Be Enough. And don't worry if you miss your cue, because there's always doors opening. They keep opening. And when I say, life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. Oh, and uh, why not take a chance on faith as well? You can protect yourself from negativity. And that's what stops most people, negative thoughts. You can coat your mind from negativity. It's a real simple exercise to do. I do it every morning before I walk out the door. So I walk out as a positive person. You know, I get tired sometimes. That's different from being negative. But to coach your mind from negativity is with one simple thing, gratitude. Gratitude erases negativity. If you wake up in the morning and you start having negative thoughts, man, this ain't my day. I'm tripping, I just don't feel myself. Every time you feel in the middle of the day, if you feel yourself doing that, stop. Just stop for a second and start going over in your mind everything you have to be grateful for. Not everything you want, everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. The fact that you woke up, that's another blessing. The fact that you can see, think, reason, that's another blessing. The fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. And I'm just talking to you, I don't even know you. I could give you 50 things you ought to be grateful for right now. I don't even know you. Start coating your mind with gratitude. It'll change everything for you. It's something in me that says, I need to do this. So that's the first voice. But we've trained ourselves to ignore this voice and listen to the second voice that I believe is a collection of the average society. It's what we learned, it's the practical voice, the should voice. Whenever you say I should do, where are you getting that from? What society says, but we forget society's kind of crazy. There's a lot of unhappy people there, a lot of addictions, a lot of stuckness. It's like why are we using them as the, the bellwether that we should get our advice from, right? So this first voice goes, I think we should do this. And we go right to this voice that says why we shouldn't. So for instance, there's many people that feel guilty about something. If you actually go to your heart, you can understand at a true level why you could have done something like that. Everyone can. But what our pain, what causes our pain is trying to get society to understand why we did something. But the collective society isn't at a consciousness where they've forgiven themselves for anything. So there's a lot of judgment you'll look at in yourself if you look at yourself through society's eyes. the labor, the work. Some people go for affirmations, but see that. I do believe in affirmations, but here's the key on affirmations, and that is to affirm the truth. Affirm the truth. If you're broke, best thing to affirm is, I am broke. You put that up on the refrigerator where you can see it every day. It'll drive you to sign up for a class to learn a skill so that this doesn't happen anymore. Now, if that doesn't do it, uh, reaffirm and put this up there. I'm 40 and broke. That's a lot more alarm. Something might be wrong with your philosophy, your policy, your plan, and your strategy. So, affirm, yes, but always affirm the truth. Here's what the old prophet said. The truth will set you free. Now, here's the freedom of the truth. Number one, freedom of the truth to correct old errors in judgment. That's the freedom of the truth, because if you don't speak the truth, then you're likely not to correct the errors in judgment. If something's wrong, but you say, hey, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. How are you gonna correct the errors in judgment that made it wrong? So you can't say it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and finally it turns out to be fine. Say no. The only way to go from wrong to fine is not by affirmation, 
the way to go from wrong to fine is to figure out where the errors in judgment were by speaking the truth. Something's wrong here. Finding out what's wrong, making the changes. Now it can go from wrong to fine. Here's a good phrase. Affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Now here's what else the truth does. First, it sets you free to correct old errors in judgment. Here's what else it does. Helps you to set up new, easy discipline turn wrong into right, to turn lack into prosperity, to turn skepticism into faith. But in order to turn wrong into right, we must speak the truth. Because only the truth will set you free. Free to correct an error in judgment. Because here's the formula for failure and here's the formula for success. The formula for failure, number one, a few errors in judgment repeated every day. We call that the formula for failure. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. Now, why would you repeat an error in judgment the second day? Reason, failure doesn't occur at the end of the first day. If it did, it would be helpful, because then you wouldn't do that anymore. But errors in judgment are so subtle because they don't usually show their results until for a while. But a few errors in judgment repeated every day, every day, every day, and sure enough, you're way off course. Now, here's all you got to do is to turn that around. A few simple disciplines practiced every day, a few simple disciplines practiced every day starts to create success. Not at the end of the first day. The first day is the end of a new beginning. The first day that you've started a new track, that you've started a new direction. So we must all speak the truth. So affirm the truth. Yes, affirm God is good. Yes, affirm life is full of possibilities. Yes, affirm all the truthful possibilities. But you don't need to try to trick yourself into saying something is okay when it isn't okay. Some people say every day in every way I'm getting better and better. And if that's not true, see, that, then that we call that delusion. If it's not true, if it is true, then it's wonderful, it's fabulous, we should celebrate. But if it's not true every day in every way I'm getting better and better, see, if that's not true, then it is an affirmation that's destructive. Trying to prove people wrong or right about you is a cheap level of motivation right. and it will wear out. In other words, not the lack of it, it's just, it's not the best type. People say, well, hey, Tom Brady, six round draft pick. I mean, he's constantly trying to prove them that they picked the wrong guys. You think he's become the greatest football player of all time because he's trying to prove people from 20 years ago wrong about where he was drafted. You don't get elite performance. Tom Brady is where he is because he sets standards for himself and has massive goals and ambitions for himself, not to prove other people wrong. Yeah. And so I think it's low level motivation. I do it too. It's the symptom of the same disease. So proving your family wrong or right is a symptom of the same disease, which is you are still obsessed with what other people are thinking about you and yeah. doing things that make you happy, that enrich you, to fulfill you your soul. And so the irony about spending your life worrying about what everybody else thinks about you is that those people will never be thought about after they're dead. So they spend their life obsessing with everyone thinks about them only to die and have no one ever remember them. Just people that are so obsessed with what other people think about them never really ever fulfill their potential. So once you can drop that addiction, whether it's friends, strangers, or your parents, and you begin to do things that fulfill you, that make you happy, that change other people's lives by yeah. your contribution, now you can be remembered. Now your life echoes into eternity, even if it was a quiet life. So just affirm the truth. The truth is I lack some skills to multiply my income by 10, which I wish to do in the future. I need to learn the skills, affirm that you don't have the skills, so that it'll drive you to get the skills because you want to multiply your income by 10. Yes, it is true. All things are possible to the believer. It is true. Errors in judgment lead to devastation. We don't just need the truth, we need the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Here's what we don't need, delusion. You don't need delusion in order to try to make something out of nothing. All you need is this simple little formula to imagine because imagination is so powerful. It's the beginning of creating all things that we see. Then faith to believe it's possible. It says what? With faith, everything's possible. Without faith, nothing is possible. So that's a good study to make creating faith to believe it's possible. But now we deposit faith and imagination into muscle, into discipline. Michelangelo was a genius, but it wasn't his genius that created this famous sculpture. But his genius was so strong and he believed in it so thoroughly that he picked up the chisel and the hammer. And it was the muscle and the chisel and the hammer that created the sculpture. And without the discipline, there would be no sculpture. 
But if you take your genius, if you take your ideas and your inspiration and your excitement and translate it into muscle, if you want good health, you can study every book there is and you can believe that it's possible to be healthy. But until you fall on the floor and start doing the push-ups, until you jog around the block, right? And still you start working on your good health, working and laboring, labor pains, we call it. So add this to your repertoire of good ideas. New life only comes from labor. Now, some people try to create it with affirmation, but it doesn't work. New life only comes from labor. That's why we should devote most of our time to labor because it's the miracle creator. It says six days labor and one day rest. Don't get those numbers mixed up. And here's why. It isn't rest that creates the miracle. It's labor that creates the miracle. And you just go right down the list. Labor creates the miracle of a career. Labor creates the miracle of a hotel. Labor creates the miracle of a fortune. You can have plenty of miracle. You don't need to engage in delusion. You just engage in reality. And here's what's real. Imagination, supported by faith, invested in labor, works miracles. The miracle of a relationship. The labor of my language produces the miracle of sight. Being able to see things you couldn't see before. If I labor well enough with the vocabulary and language that I've got, describing the value of my own ideas translated for you, maybe it'll help you to see something today, tomorrow, that you've never seen before. So the labor of my language, the work, and lecturing is hard work. They say one hour of intense lecturing is like digging ditches for eight hours. The intensity and, and, the, and the energy and the vitality it takes right? You just become almost exhausted sometimes in laboring with words to get your vocabulary out there where it touches someone's consciousness so that they can see something they've never seen before. And we call that miracle stuff. I don't know how it works. You don't need to know how it works. All you need is a simple analysis like this. But the labor takes the idea supported by faith, translate it into labor, and it starts producing all kinds of miracle. So now you can understand that you are a miracle worker. Would a miracle worker sleep late? I doubt it. Unique thing about genius, genius has no sense of time. It's amazing. If you could have met Michelangelo and you know, you get there and it's like 11 o'clock, it's like midnight. And you said to Michelangelo, isn't it a little late? And Michelangelo would say, late, late, what is, what's, what's this late? What does that mean, late? I don't understand, late. To a genius, it's not late <laughs> to the average person it's getting late but to a genius it's not late say well michelangelo i'll meet you here in the morning and watch you get started and you got to get there at four o'clock you see it's really early and michelangelo says early what's her i don't understand this what's this early it doesn't compute early not to a genius because the genius is consumed by the finished product and he devotes his imagination and his faith translated into muscle to produce the sculpture now you can do that with your health. Health is just as valuable as a sculpture that inspires the world. You know, your own education, your own future, your own career, your own relationships, a building a hotel, creating success, making a fortune. It's all part of the same scheme of imagination, faith supported by labor. And now all things are possible to those that believe. Wow. Everybody experiences what I'm about to talk about. Everybody has some form of it. It could be in a relationship, a loving relationship. It could be a job relationship. It could just be anything, man. So let's talk about it. Life is too short to be waiting on somebody to act right. You know, uh, the clock is ticking. And I don't know if you know that, man, but time just, time flies by sometimes. So you got to start thinking, man. Life is too short to be waiting on somebody to act right. And I'm not just talking about in a relationship like you married or something like that, which is another one. But my goodness, man, I don't really have time for that. I would rather surround myself with people who add value to my life instead of subtracting from my life. 
If you got somebody in your life that's always taking and never giving, you're probably waiting on them to act right. If you got a person that's always getting something from you and never say thank you, life is too short to be waiting on somebody to act right. You're in a relationship with a person who constantly does you wrong, repeatedly, and you keep expecting them to change their behavior and they don't. You know, they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting a different result. It's insane for us to continue to wait on somebody to act right. When first of all, you can't make nobody act right. You can't change nobody that don't want to be changed. I've done it before. I've done it in relationship. I've done it with my children. I taught it to them, but I'm waiting on them to get it. And I got tired of it. And I told them one time, I said, hey, I'm done. I'm done trying to get you to move on and let's just have a great life together. I'm tired of you bringing up issues. I don't let people do that to me no more. You stop bringing up issues from the past. We've all changed. Grow up, move on. Now, if you want to stay back there and want to hang on to something in the past so you can keep talking about how miserable you are, go on and be miserable. But life is too short for me to be waiting on you to act right. So now, here I am over here. This is the way I am. If you want some of this love, some of this guidance, some of this understanding, some of this leadership, you need some occasional help, I'm here. But if you want to keep dragging me over the coals about an issue that you can't get past, I'm sorry. I'm no longer available for you. I'm sorry that you can't get past it. I'm sorry that it has bothered you for a number of years. My apologies. Have you ever found yourself apologizing to somebody over and over for the same thing, really but they just can't seem to get past it? Life is too short to be waiting on somebody to act right. And I look up, man, and I just decided, man, I ain't doing it no more. I'm just not going to do it no more. I'm sorry. If I've offended you, if I hurt you, and I'm man enough to apologize, I expect you to be man enough or woman enough to accept it. You don't have to forget it. I'm just saying I'm sorry and I'm asking for your forgiveness. But if you ain't in the forgiving mood, I'm gonna take it to God. I'm gonna ask God to forgive me cause he will. And then I'm moving on. Me and you ain't got to talk no more. You can't get past it, I understand. But, but my daddy always said, you gonna either get over it or you gonna die mad. Time is short. Every one of us here has been given the same amount of time in a day. 1,440 minutes a day, 168 hours per week. I'd write down my priorities and I'd get committed to certain priorities. Now is the accepted time. The things we ought to do, the classes we ought to take, the books we ought to read. Do it now. The family that needs you, spend more time now. Write that letter home now that you've been meaning to write time for study do it now people you ought to witness to do it now every time the clock ticks it seems to say now today time is too short for indecision and vacillation fools say that time is long every morning we have 86,400 seconds to spend and to invest and each day the bank name time opens a new account for you and for me it allows no balances and no overdrafts if you fail to use the day's deposits, the loss is yours. The one commodity that is most valuable on this earth is time. Time to love, time to live. From the moment the human body is born, it begins dying. Happen faster, some happen slower, some of us help them have go faster, and some of them prevent it from happening sooner than later. How many seconds, how many minutes do we waste every day doing things that are nowhere near the goals and aspirations and passions that we have inside? How many times do you go through the course of a day and realize, did I do anything I set out to do today? Write down those goals each and every day. No matter if it's two goals a day, if you can accomplish those, then you're doing more than just making it through the day. 
you are living and achieving your dreams. Find time to better yourself, read, explore, research, live life, do things you've never thought of doing before. That's what it's all about. When you're born, that's that date that they put on the left side of the tombstone. <laughs> when you die, they put another date on the right side of the tombstone. But that dash in the middle is the most important thing on that tombstone. That is a line that throughout that entire time frame, you were able to impact and touch others' lives. You were able to leave your mark on this earth. You were able to build a legacy that nobody could change. You were able to have it to where people remembered who you are no matter what. When you're living for that dash in the middle, you're going to remember your why. <laughs> your why, why you're here. Not, not the why, why did you do something. Your why, your, your reason for getting up in the morning. Your reason for pushing yourself past the brink of exertion and giving up. Your reason for moving on and, and, and getting things done in life. That dash in the middle, that's the thing that pushes you. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns, he said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator. On a scale of one to 10, is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Your relationships, what kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? I'm tired of playing defense on the faith journey. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of apologizing. Do you ever just get tired of reacting to the devil and his schemes? I want to be somebody who's directing. I want to be somebody who's leading. I don't want his threats to dictate one step that I take. So many of us, we tiptoe through life to simply arrive safely at death. It is a fact that you will die. The question today is, will you ever actually live? Is there anybody in this building that's tired of being discontent? And you want to be able to say, if I get my way, I'm going to be happy. If I don't get my way, I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to let my circumstances control my moods. I am content and emotionally stable. That is my goal, to be content and emotionally stable. It doesn't take much faith to give God glory when all your bills are paid. You don't have to be real strong when everything is well in your life. But when the bottom falls out, when sickness comes, when trials and difficulties come, when your health starts to fail, when your children break your heart, when difficulties, tough times, hard days, long nights, it is then that your faith kicks in to let you know that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Maybe you're unhappy right now with your current job. Maybe you're unhappy with your health or, or maybe you're unhappy with the season of life you find yourself in. Has it ever occurred to you that you are not there by coincidence, but rather you are there by providence? I am here for such a time as this. See, there's a reason for your season. There's purpose in your pain. There is a design in the disaster. 
There's hope in the hurt. There's life even after death. I think it's time for a turnaround. Because crying and complaining is not going to stop the trial. Murmuring and groaning is not going to stop the trial. And the purposes that God wants to work out in our lives may include trials, setbacks, heartbreak. It may mean that you have to stay sick a while. It may mean that you have to go through it a while. You're not going to come through it yet because God has his mighty hand on you. And that hand on your life is so powerful to get purpose out of you. Hold your head up and dry your tears. You have nothing to be ashamed of. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. And move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Your life is a seed. The seed has to be coupled with a healthy environment. The seed has to go into the soil. It has to be healthy soil. The seed needs water. The seed needs sunlight. See, you and I are the same thing. We're a seed. We have to connect it to a community of people that are healthy and vibrant and believe the best really is in store for us. See, because you're kind of saying, I'm over it. But if you would share your calling, the moment you say, I'm over it, you would have somebody else walk up to you and say, wait a minute. Let me, let me just shed some light onto that dark area so that you can grow again. You're not quitting today. You're not quitting tomorrow. You're going to run this race of faith and you're not going to give up. So as you begin to look at life, as you begin to look at the things you want to do, decide that you're going to become the active force in your life. Decide that you're not going to go through life feeling like a victim. Decide that when things become challenging, that you're not going to personalize it, that you're going to look at it, and you do whatever you must do in order to work things out and learn from it. That's the key. You will always be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. You got to get the word. Happiness is something you design. Happiness is a study. Happiness is a practice. Happiness is an art. It's not an accident. It's an art. And anybody that wants to can study, practice the art, happy living. Happiness is like culture. Money doesn't make you cultured, but culture is within the grasp of all of us. All you have to be is committed to it and make it a study. Culture is a study. Sophistication is a study. It's not an amount. It's not an account. It's a study. Money doesn't make you sophisticated. Only study and practice makes you sophisticated. Only study and practice makes you cultured. And only study and practice makes you happy. Study and practice makes you rich. Key phrase, don't be lazy in learning. One, how to do well. Next, how to live well. Don't be lazy in learning and practicing the art of economics and practicing the art of lifestyle. I'm not retreating. I'm not running. I don't care if you say we outnumber. We live by this and we die by this. We don't retreat. Once we hit that wall, we don't quit. We don't give up. We push a switch called will and we start using our willpower. Yes, we tire. Yes, the mind is saying give up. Yes, it's saying quit. But we cannot quit because we realize we have not reached the goal yet. This is not what I dreamed about. This is not what I said I was going to do. This is what I talked about. This is not what it looks like. And then once we get past that place, we become comfortable with being uncomfortable. We no longer thrive to be in a comfort zone. We no longer place ourselves in positions that make us feel good. Because some of what you want, 
some of what you trying to get ain't in the comfort zone. And so if what you want is not in the comfort zone, you got to come out of the comfort zone to get what you want. Absolutely refuse to quit when you know what you're doing, what you're studying, the price you're paying is going to pay enormous dividends in the long run. Remember, 3% of the population earn 97% of all the money that's being earned. It's not an accident. It's not that they're that bright. Some of them aren't. They've learned to pay the price and they always earn the reward. There's some things that you can accomplish that you can't see right now. My favorite book says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. When you're willing to say yes, when you're willing to move forward, life will respond to you. Mindset transformation is very important. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't want to think like everybody else. You want uncommon thinking. Expand your skill set. If it's in your imagination, it's possible. Do you know that you can't think of something that can't happen? You know it's impossible to think of the impossible. It's not possible. So if you think it, it's possible. And if you live your life in possibilities instead of probabilities, you have a greater chance of finding happiness. I'm the kind of person, if I'm going to do it, I'm all in. I'm the kind of person, I don't like being in between. I don't like to be at the back of the line. I want to be in the front of the line. And I'm going to prepare myself and work on myself to be a dominant voice. Carefully consider how you live. So live wisely, not foolishly. Make the most of your time because these are difficult days. You, you need to have a routine. Now, when you're stuck at home, it's so easy to slip into sloppiness. I want you to write this down right now. Routine develops resilience. You gotta resource yourself well, file every day, read every day. And so at 17, I started reading and filing every day and literally have done it all my life. And one day, one day I began to realize I was relying way too much on those files, that I wasn't as creative and I wasn't testing what I should be testing you because I, I, had, a, I had a safety net. I'd go over there and, well, here I got this. And, and I was starting to read old thoughts and old thoughts are old thoughts. Happiness is freedom from the negative children of fear, such as worry, low self-esteem, envy, greed, anger, resentment, and so on. Happiness is an awareness and a grasp of the positive power of life and loving values. It is an order of thought, activity, and lifestyle. Happiness is values in balance. It is contact with people of substance. Never live your life in probability. Probability is the probability of something happening. There's a statistic a track attached to a probability. One in every 3,000 people do this. One in every, that's a probability. A possibility has no stats attached to it. Live your life in possibilities and you're changing. Just change the way you think. If you've had a dream, I guarantee you, you were born with that dream woven into your DNA. You see, dreams are deeply personal. And this is important for you to understand because if you give up on your dreams, your dream's gonna haunt you. When suffering hits my life, I hope I have been putting in to my interior life. But in order to use all those other muscles to face suffering, you're gonna actually have to put in and focus on the body and focus on your legs and understand it. it's, it's leg day, it's gonna have some unintended consequences and his big leg day workout routine for you is this little phrase live in harmony for 29 years kicking cancer's butt and still working still in his right mind still got the fire in his belly 
still being active, still making a difference, still motivating people and inspiring people and making people feel good. If you believe that laughter is important, if you believe being deliberately positive is important, having a spirit of optimism is important in spite of. Predictability creates stability. Structure creates steadiness. You need to set and stick with a routine for the duration of this pandemic. Stop watching so much news because it's all negative right now. And for your own mental and emotional and spiritual health, you need to monitor your media intake. I made a decision, a very difficult decision, all of my work for all those years of, of filing. I made a decision to get rid of all of it. They're not relevant, they're not new, they're not fresh, they don't breathe, there's no fire and passion in them. Now I'm just going to say to you, one of the good things about a crisis is it begins to help us to let go of the things that we have depended on the past so that we can go to an entire new level of living. One woman just decided, you know what? You can't take my dignity from me. I can only give that up and I don't choose to give it up. And I will not go back to the bus. The answer is no. And Rosa Parks changed an entire society because that day she chose to focus on something else. She gave it a different meaning. This is not a command. You do not have control over me. And she decided to fight and she changed the direction of a country and of many other countries. She started something. There's another dimension, which is trait conscientiousness, which is integrity and, and, uh, and dutifulness, um, orderliness, industriousness, openness, which is like a hybrid between intellect, intelligence roughly, and creativity. And so you can go there and find out how you compare to other people. And that's kind of interesting and useful because it's kind of useful to know who you are. And to, to know that that's actually who you are, you know, that, that you have a nature. We forget that you don't have to be famous to have the ability to change at least your own personal history, to change the direction we go in our life. We have the power to choose, even if you haven't before. You can finally say, no more, I won't put up with that, within myself or from anybody else. And here's what I'm gonna do differently. That's where the breakthroughs really start to happen. Now the question is, why do some people stand their ground and make something change versus other people just kind of accept things? Happiness is contentment with the tasks of your life. It is thought inspired by, organized with, and rooted in your personal philosophy to become an invaluable form of currency for you to spend and invest in your own better future. Happiness is activity with purpose. It's love in practice. You can take an introvert. Um, you know you're an introvert if you're if when you're around people you get exhausted by it and you have to go off by yourself and recover you know th then you're an introvert and if you're an introvert you don't really like being in groups and so sales you know maybe that's not for you you know um, and, th and that's a good thing to know because if you're an introvert why go be a salesperson and be miserable do some do something where you can spend time alone and not be miserable but that's better Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.